Hey there! Happy Wednesday! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's the time that we can relax and craft together. So tonight we are continuing our embroidery of the month, which is the uh, uh, lilac. <laughs> right now it's just kind of a gray blob and some pink blobs, purple blobs. Uh, that is the squirrel and the lilacs. Uh, I think we're going to get uh, the squirrel done tonight and uh, a big portion of the lilacs as well. So I'm excited for that. Uh, soon we'll be able to get to work on the leaves. Uh, that'll be a stem stitch. But tonight I think is going to be full of lazy daisy stitches again. So all right, let's get going. Okay, here's where we left off. Thanks, Emily. All right, here we are. All right, we just about finished the squirrel. All we have left is this little face. And then we have our lilacs. I ran out of floss in the middle of one of these flowers. So I think I might actually start on the flowers today and then we'll go back to, to the squirrel. So it looks like I have another a piece of um, floss uh, that we have from yesterday that I already split into the three strands. Uh, so let's let's just get going. I want to see how far we get today because we I'd still like to finish this by Friday. Um, but that's just two days. <laughs> and we have all of the leaves and I know the text is going to take some time. So we will just crank at it today. So I want to I want to just continue where I left off with these two little petals. So I'm going to weave into the backs of the stitches. And we'll get going. All right, so back and forth three times, kind of locks the thread in place. All right, let me scroll down so I can see your comments. There we go. Okay. Hello, Adrian. Hey, Catherine. Hi, Amy and Kathy. We got Emily over here. All right. So we left off on this lazy daisy stitch. So let's uh, do the other two, the other half of it. So uh, I'm coming up in the middle. I'm going to do this one over here. I always kind of like going above like this. It works a little bit better for me. So I'm going to just uh, hold the thread with my hand. I'm going to make that arc around the stitch, kind of like the same shape as the stitch that I'm doing. And then back in the same hole I came out of. And before I get too far, I'm going to come up at the apex of that arc. I'm kind of within my little circle that I made here. And we're going to slowly pull our thread through. I can let go with my thumb. And there we go. Our thread here is going to catch catch the loop here. So I'm not going to pull tight. I'm, I'm really letting it just be, be lazy. <laughs> and lazy daisy stitch loose. And that's because then I'll still have this pretty like teardrop shape. If I pull too much on this, it'll just look like two straight lines next to each other. But I want this pretty arc. So I'm going to just let it be loose. And your stitches don't all need to be super tight. And then I'm going to just put a little anchor stitch, a little just tiny stitch to hold down my loop on the other side of the loop there. So there we go. Itty bitty uh, stitch to hold it down. And there is a uh, part of our uh, lazy daisy stitch. So that actually, the, the thing that we actually did is called, uh, like if we isolate it, it's called a single chain stitch. If you put a bunch of single chain stitches together all at the same uh, like middle point, then it becomes a lazy daisy stitch. So let's do another one. Kind of arcing around our shape, going back in the same hole I came out of. And before I get too far, coming back up at the top of our arc within our circle. And, you know, once I get it pulled this tight, then I let go with my thumb. And there we go. We're catching our loop and just letting it be loose, tacking it down with the tiny tiny stitch. And there we go. So you'll see like with these lazy daisy stitches, I keep rotating my piece all the time just so it's um, just most comfortable, I suppose. Uh, you can play around with how what works best for you. All right, that guy's done. So I, I have my pattern here for uh, the kit. Um, and I'm just trying to see what ones are this, this pale, this light purple here. So it looks like we missed, we didn't do this one over here. I don't know, maybe we just kind of go around and back up. So I'm right here. So this guy, 
this guy, and then back down. So, okay, so doot to doot. I'll do those two next. All right, again, I like kind of grabbing it with my thumb. The other way to do this is to go in and out in the same motion. So I'm going to go in the same hole. I made my kind of circle here. And I'm going to come out right away without pulling the needle all the way through. I'm going to come out at the top of that arc like so. And then I can pull through. And the rest of the process is the same. So that's called the sewing method. I don't know. We're going to do the stabbing method tonight. Stabbing method is where you, how I was doing it the first way. Just uh, going all the way in, coming all the way out in two separate motions. I find it, I, I'm a little bit more accurate doing it that way. But it's just because I haven't practiced the sewing method as much, I think. You don't have to hold it down like how I am with my thumb, but I, if I, I find that if I don't, uh, when I start pulling this through, it wants to pull this thread back through too. So if I have my thumb here, it's kind of preventing it from pulling back, back in. We had another beautiful 70s day here today. So we had that one mega hot day yesterday and it was all done after that. <laughs> Just a, a really nice day. Actually, it was pretty dark all day. I don't know if it actually rained, but it was dark. But luckily, I was I was inside working anyway. Um, but this afternoon, it got bright and sunny and, and nice, and I went for a went for a little walk. All right, this is the next one. Then after this, one, I'm gonna have to check check um, what's next again. All right, so I'm not close enough to like grab this with my thumb because you know I can only reach over there. So I'm gonna do that sewing method where I go in and out. Here's another way you can do it. If you don't do the arc first, you can go in and out like so. And then I can take the thread and go around the back of my needle and then pull through. There we go. So let's do it that way again. Come out the hole. We'll just go in and out. There we are, and now I'm gonna put that thread behind. Boop. All right, two more on this one. Thanks everyone for joining me again. Feel free to um, ask any questions. I'd love to hear what you guys are working on tonight. I've seen some of your projects over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Oh, Gretchen, I saw your cross stitch. That was so cute. It was fun with your initials stitched in there, too. All right, last stitch. And then I got to check the pattern again. It's looking cute, though. It's starting to starting to feel like um, like lilacs there, I think. Okay, so we did doot doot doot. All right, so kind of back one. So it's it's this one right here, and then straight down. We'll go doot doot doot. So three, like one two three, looks like the next fits. Yeah. Okay. So zoop. That's my next path, and then by then I'll probably be out of floss. Actually, we might be out of floss beforehand. It looks like I have a lot of floss left yet, but these lazy daisy stitches do kind of chomp up the floss. There's a lot of um, length of thread used up in each each stitch. Ooh, that last one felt extra loose. Oh, you guys, uh, everyone that ordered our new uh, Penguin and Fish Needle Minders, they are in the mail. Uh, so thanks again um, for your orders. I'm super happy with how they turned out. I love the new colors. Our original color was that tan, 
and uh, now we have the, <laughs> they're covered in needles over here, but our original one was the tan, and now we have them in the red and the white, too, and I think they're just so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited to make more like I want to do like a bunch of cute animals for sure I will do the the koala I think that would be like a super adorable needle minder that'll probably be the next one I, I try and do oh cool Amy says I finished the squirrel including the face oh the blooms nice and started the words oh nice so I have stems and words left that's cool I think I'm I'm trying to, like, I was trying to think, like, oh, do I want to do the, the stems with the leaves, or do I want to do the, the words first? And I think I probably will end up doing the words the last, just because I'm kind of excited about doing the, doing the leaves. All right, let's, since I can't, I'm having a hard time reaching again, let's go in this, this mode. Oops, <laughs> I almost started the next stitch without without doing the tiny anchor stitch here. In and out, wrap around the point. Keeping it lazy and one little last stitch. Oh, getting low on the thread. Lazy daisies get annoying when you don't have a lot of thread left because you gotta like wrap it around the needle yet and it's hard to get that kind of circle going. I might get halfway done with the next, the next uh, lazy daisy stitch, we'll see. I'm actually surprised I got it this far on, on this one. Okay, now what one was it? Was it this one? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, this one over here. I didn't know if it was this one or this one. Let's do this side first. I'm excited about the leaves because they're the, and the stems, because I'm gonna be using the stem stitch on it and I get excited now um, when I do um, the stem stitch just because that was such a mystery uh, to me for like years and once I figured it out I feel like you know it's like a little magic trick so now now I kind of <laughs> get excited about it because it's like ooh, I know how to do that magic trick. If I'm on a desert island and need the stem stitch <laughs> I'll be able to do it. I'll, I'll I'll be able to help the survivors with my with my stem stitch. Oh, so many projects, Catherine, that you're working on. Uh, I more and more I'm feeling like I need to make like a genuine list of of projects because some of them are really really small. Like I, I need to repair like the elbow on this shirt, you know, or one is one is a a um, little dinosaur I want to uh, applique onto this shirt. So some of them are like little small projects that it would just feel really good to get them off my my list. It's not even my list. It's just like they're laying around and I don't want them to lay around anymore. Especially after I I cleaned up all my craft stuff. Oh shoot, I got a little knot. Uh, craft stuff um, a couple weeks ago is going on here there we go weird let me try and fix that a little bit I pulled really tight on it okay I think we're fine I'm gonna try and get that last stitch out of this though I know I don't have any floss left really but I think I have enough for one tiny more stitch Maybe it's being a little angry, angry with me, but um, let's get this stitch. Get around there, little guy. Boop. But it's been fun to like discover the old projects. You know, for example, I've been working 
pretty consistently now on my emergency craft project. So I, I've moved it away from emergency craft project and it's my, my just a project. <laughs> <laughs> I need a new emergency craft project. Uh, that's a project that I just have in my bag. So if I'm out, I already, I always have a project if I need one. Um, but this was that. And so it's been sitting around for years and uh, I finally have decided to just like do it because now I'm excited about it again. That's that purple doily I'm working on. Um, so that's that was like a project I had forgotten about. <laughs> and when I cleaned... When I cleaned up all of my um, craft supplies and everything, I found just like a few other little random things that were intended for some project. And uh, I actually finished one or two of those and uh, that's just felt so good. It's like, it's like just, I don't know, we're cleansing, <laughs> cleansing ourselves a little bit. Um, so that's been kind of fun. Um, all right, so I just like to kind of continue on that. I, I feel like there's only like maybe three or four more little projects like that, and then I'll have like all those old projects done um, or a decision made on them, or they just won't be laying around anymore. That's that's the key. All right. Uh, 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 um, what to do now? Should I do his little face or should I continue on the purple flowers? I'm kind of into the flowers. I think I'm going to just continue on the flowers today. We'll get to his little face at some point. All right, I need a new piece of thread. So I'm grabbing my purple again. Let's get our 24 inches or so. Oh yeah, I'm using I'm using the matching scissors again <laughs> again today. This one was actually uh, designed to, to be like this exact color. <laughs> and um, we named it the same too, but I just think it's so freaking cute, these little stork scissors. I'm overloaded with purple lately because my, my doily is purple too. Oh, Lisa says, thank you for getting my order out so quick. My mother insisted I ordered her a red needle minder. Yay. Oh, and a red stork scissors and a few needles. Oh, awesome. The rest of the order is for you. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's sweet of you. Hope your mom and you like everything. <laughs> But yeah, I'm all caught up on orders again. So um, if you've ordered from me lately, you should have received uh, your tracking email. Um, let's get these guys together. All right, uh, grab my needle. I, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm still not always used to having the needle minder on my actual um, piece. Usually I kind of have a needle minder like near sitting nearby me and I just kind of throw my needle at it. It's kind of fun to actually have it on my working piece, but I always kind of forget about it. Um, Cause like, you know, I'll have one in my, in my um, little project tray and I'll just throw it at that when I'm not using it. So to throw it right at my piece is, is like a habit I haven't totally built up yet. Um, let's see. Let's just continue like a little circle situation that we're, we're doing here. So, okay. Zoop. We did those. Okay. So it looks like we can start on this big one. So these three, and then we can like work our way back up. I think that's what we, so like this kind of whole edge. So we'll start here, I think. Do, do, do. Okay. So. One, two, three is our, our next ones. So I'm going to weave in the back again three times. Oh, Amy, I think that's perfectly fine. Amy says that she accidentally stitched her squirrel with two strands instead of three. Totally valid. Three strands really does look really close to two strands. Um, I mean, it's not like, it's not like you did like one strand instead of six strands, you know, uh, for, for thickness. Oh, I gotta look at this again now. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. And you'll just have more thread left over, which is nice. 
Ooh, you're gonna stitch uh, pillowcase cuffs next. Oh, that's fun. That's a good old traditional uh, embroidery <laughs> situation there. Oh God, but pe speaking of like pillowcases, we started those like improv pieced pillowcases for the um, granny square quilt, which I also haven't finished. It's so close. Like it's like, a, it's like six minutes of work and I'll be done with it really. <laughs> but I've been main, I've been meaning to film it. And so I just haven't got, gotten to that the last six minutes of that project. But we, if you remember, we had started improv pieced pillowcases with the same fabrics or the scrap fabrics from the um, uh, granny square quilt. And I just like, you, you mentioning the pillowcases reminded me like, oh yeah, that'd be on my unfinished project list. Oh, what's, what's, uh, hey Lynn, what's, um, too much like count and cross stitch this? I feel like, um, embroidery, like if we're going to do, so this piece is going to take me about five hours. Uh, I've been working on it an hour every night. This is, the, it is quite, um, dense with stitches during, in this section here. Here's the finished one. Uh, it's pretty dense there. So that's, that's a lot of stitching, but if I were to do a counted cross stitch this size, it would probably take me like 40 plus hours. <laughs> it would take multiple and exponential, um, exponentially more time um, to do like on, a, on like 14 count eight of cloth or like even 10 count, like a pretty big, a pretty big cross stitch fabric. It would still take multiple times over more time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of why I like, I like content cross stitch, how, how like just the picture just kind of develops over the piece. I think that's really cool, but dang, um, embroidery is a way, way quicker win in my mind. But yeah, what we're doing here tonight, I, I, I agree. This is kind of a lot, this is a lot of stitching in, in one area. So that's gonna make this this embroidery take maybe a bit longer than than usual, but I think we're still on pace to finish it by Friday. Panicked a little bit there in my head <laughs> for a second. I was thinking it was Thursday, uh, but it's just Wednesday. So yeah, I think I think we're in pretty good shape yet. Once we get all these lazy daisy stitches done, I think we're just gonna cruise through the rest of this. Ooh, I'm kind of excited. I forgot about all the little French knots in here. I'm kind of excited to do those. So I, I think um, kind of into doing all these lazy daisies today. So maybe I'll just stick to this. Oh, this one's looking pretty wonky, but it'll be fine. Um, so versus like switching to the squirrel's face or something like that. I, I'm kind of liking doing this. Uh, so I might start up the blue lazy daisy stitches for these lilacs right when we're done here with the purple. And then we have the dark purple for, for the rest of it. It's a three colored um, lilac. Uh, all right, da, 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 da. Okay. this one right here. I think it's coming together. Oh, you have to count the flowers to figure out which color. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Lynn. Uh, that is kind of unusual. Uh, usually I don't have a whole area like this where where I do have to figure it out like that. <laughs> but you're right. In this case, I am having to figure out the um, the flowers. Luckily, though, um, one thing I, you know, in I had that in mind, though, with the French knots. So you can see there's a bunch of little uh, French knots in here. I, I had that in mind that ugh, it's going to be annoying to like see all the different color French knots. So I didn't, I didn't do that. I made it all one color. <laughs> so once we get through these, the purple, this light purple, and then our little blue, then all the rest of it is, is dark purple, including all the French knots. So I did try to make it a little easier in that sense. I originally had this whole thing uh, when I was designing it, I originally had this whole thing in the light purple and it just felt like so flat like it, it needed some oomph to it so then I tried the dark purple but it still felt like it needed 
something. Like, I wanted the lilac to feel like the, you know, the real looking thing, you know, versus the, the cutesy squirrel. And it just needed a, something a little something else, so then I added added the blue. And then it then it felt right. So, yep. By doing that, I gave up a little bit of the easiness of, you know, that I did have to, <laughs> you know, look at the grid and see where, where the purple would go. But if you made a mistake on what flower went where, it would just, it would feel the same. So in this case, like in a counted cross stitch, if you like mess up on a few cross stitches, it might make a real big difference. <laughs> like you might have screwed up the whole the whole look. Uh, but with this, if you get a, a purple flower in the wrong spot, it'll it'll be fine yet. Okay, so doing it again. So doot to doot are the next two. And you know what? I'm not gonna go. For, I'm not gonna even look past that. Let's get those two. Oh, thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn says, oh, this is perfect with the with the different colors. Yeah, it's just funny that you mentioned like having to, to count um, because I was I was definitely thinking about that when I was designing like, oh, it'll just I'll just do all one color. And then I'm just like, oh, I can't do it. Just one color. It's, it just doesn't look right. But <laughs> I did. I I originally had that in, in my mind of like, oh, it's going to be annoying to go around to all these colors. But I sacrificed that for having more colors. <laughs> but I'm not unaware of it. <laughs> I just uh, knowingly went against that. Get around there. It's hard to do these when it's like right in the middle of my piece here. I don't like when I can't reach things with my thumb. I suppose I could use a smaller hoop. You c you don't actually need your hoop to uh, work in, like you don't need to have your whole, you don't need to see your entire piece in your hoop. Like I could do a four inch hoop and just kind of move the hoop around as I stitch, but I kind of find that annoying. I like using the bigger hoop. Uh, just curious, uh, little Brittany is saying, uh, uh, just curious, is this more of a hobby or what you do for work? Like do you sell stuff you make? Yes, so this is, um, I don't necessarily sell stuff I make. So this is my, this is what I do full time. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I sell kits. So like, you know, here's, we just released a bunch of, a bunch of farm animals. So I, I have them on hand. So like, for example, this is one of our smaller kits. Uh, and then the, um, here's a little pig, but like the big kit, uh, came in here. So this is the bigger size. This is our embroidery of the month this month. So on the back of the, the front panel is our instructions there. So I primarily sell kits and uh, different embroidery supplies and other craft supplies. Um, digital patterns. We have the scissors and floss and all that's good stuff. So just living in this crafty world, that's, that's, that's the goal, that's the plan. <laughs> oh, Robin, no, I didn't, I didn't see, let me scroll back, let me see if I can, I must have missed it. Oh, that's nice. Oh, why am I taking the thread apart? Oh, man, you guys, sorry, I missed a whole bunch of um, messages. Uh, why am I taking the thread apart? Um, I am taking the thread apart because of, of this. So I'll show you what this is. So when you have embroidery floss, so embroidery is typically done with um, what we call stranded floss or six strand embroidery floss. So this is like, this is our brand, the pocket skeins, um, but you know, like DMC floss that you might see at Joann's and stuff. It is made of six, six strands. So if I, if I tap the end here, uh, you can see the strands kind of separate and for six strand embroidery floss, it's actually meant to be easy to separate. And the reason for that is because it's common in embroidery to choose the amount of threads you want to stitch with, and that kind of controls the how thick or thin your stitches are. So for example, um, if you just look at one through six here, this is all, the six is all six strands of floss. So this is if I didn't take separate the strands at all. We've got a hefty thick line here. Uh, versus like one strand, this is me just stitching, like I take one strand out and I'm only stitching with one of the six strands. 
it's a much thinner line. Uh, and then here's all the differences in, in the middle, right? Um, so you can see like up here, the floss is stitched with six strands and the thickness guide is stitched with one strand. That's a really kind of big contrast in the look and feel, right? So there's a whole lot of artistic license one has um, just with the thickness of um, their stitches, right? And, and these are all the same stitches. So this is um, just the different number of strands. So I typically like stitching with three strands, two or three typically. If I'm doing a little more detailed work, I'll, I'll go with two strands because that's just a hair more delicate, um, thinner lines than the three. But three is my kind of typical go-to. Uh, if you do stitch with six strands, it can sometimes be kind of difficult uh, to pull the thread through the fabric. Um, so I don't know, I typically do with the three. Um, you can play around with that though, for sure. Um, but that's, that's why. So I'm, I'm attempting to have a slightly thinner line and have it be easier to stitch. So I'm stitching with three instead of, instead of six. Uh, oh, these other, these other ones at the bottom here, uh, this is pearl cotton floss size five. So pearl cotton, you'll, you'll see this at Joann's and, and, uh, you know, DMC also is a brand that also has pearl cotton floss. Uh, if you look really close to, oops, sorry. If you look really closely, it is um, really twisted. You cannot separate those strands easily. So it, it, it's not like six strand embroidered floss. That's it's very easy to separate the strands. This you would you would not separate the strands. That would be like the most difficult thing ever. Um, so you're going to be stitching with like this twisted thing. So this is this is pearl cotton floss uh, five strand. Uh, these right here are, uh, it's 12 weight thread, so sewing thread. Um, let's see if I have an example. Hold on here. Okay, so this is actually the same stuff that I'm, I'm working on uh, the, um, that uh, doily with. I'm actually <laughs> stitching it with thread this big, but this is uh, sewing thread. Um, this one happens to be cotton, but this is um, 12 weight. So it's a it's kind of thick for sewing thread, but you still can run it through your sewing machine. Anyway, so this is uh, 12 weight uh, with one strand, and then this is 12 weight with two strands. So two strands equals about four strands of the embroidery floss. And this is just some yarn I had. I don't even know what size. I get messed up on the different sizes of yarn. <laughs> uh, so, but I just threw that in there for, for myself, really, um, just to see like a little bit of a difference. Everyone does one to six strands. When is someone going to be brave enough to drive 12 strands at once? Well, with 12 strands, so the trick with 12 um, would be what fabric you're using because um, that, at least for me, is the big difficulty with six or more strands is that it's really difficult to pull through typical fabric. So um, this this is a cotton muslin, and sometimes muslin has a little uh, looser weave, wider weave than, oh, I twisted that guy a little bit, than um, like a quilting weight cotton fabric or like a shirt fabric. Um, so it would be really hard to pull your, your needle through. Like you might even need like a pliers to pull it through, which is not fun, <laughs> believe me. Um, so uh, that's, that's really the trick with, if, you're, if you would um, do 12 strands, I think it'd be kind of awesome. You'd have these, like, these super fat lines. It'd be really cool. It'd be cool to contrast in the same piece 12 strands with like, you know, a couple like, you know, like two strands. So you got like these big hefty lines next to these really kind of little lines. That'd be really pretty. I think if you were doing it on like a linen, um, that would be, I think you'd probably be able to pull your thread through like a loose linen because that can have a pretty big weave. Um, so that probably wouldn't be that horribly difficult. Uh, the other trick is going to be threading. 
the needle, but like if I were to stitch with 12 strands, I would thread just six strands. Like I would cut a, uh, a piece of, you're a thousand percent joking, but it totally would be good. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it would totally be super cute. Like I'm, gonna, I'm imagining the 12, 12 um, strands. Um, but if you were to do it, I would, I would just um, take, I would cut a piece of six strands embroidered plus, so like one, you know, you know, straight from the skein. I'd cut it twice as long as I wanted, and then I would thread it and fold it in half. And by folding it in half, you'd get those 12 strands. So that's that's kind of how I would do that. So I have stitched, I don't know if you've seen um, any of my TikToks or anything, but like behind me is that, I can't flip my camera here, but like behind me is that hedgehog. Uh, that was actually stitched with like yarn not like bulky yarn but pretty hefty yarn so at least at least the size of of this yarn um but i i did use a fabric that was had some it was just like a it was a bigger weave so it was easier to stitch through all right i'm just trying to think do i want to get a new piece of thread Ugh, i can get like i can pull out a couple more petals out of here i think all right so i'm jumping up to here Oh, you're a Midwestern too. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, they don't get sarcasm. I mean, I kind of, I, I got it, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? That would be kind of cute. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a crafty sarcasm. Like you're, you're challenging a crafter. Like, can this be, is this a possibility? <laughs> because <laughs> the wheels are going to start spinning and be like, Ooh, that's, that's a creative idea. Like what, what could we accomplish with that? <laughs> like it just gets me wanting to, to start a new project with 12 strands. Like I'm seriously considering, Ooh, what, what would be like a good design to do with 12 strands? <laughs> uh. All right, I'm getting way more stitches out of here than I thought. Ugh, this is going to be the last one, though, for sure. I'm not going to be able to get another one out of here, I don't think. Ah, I don't even know if I'm going to get this one out of here. Get around the bend. Okay. It's going to pull off my needle, I think. All right, let's weave that in. I got one more petal to do on that one, but it ain't happening with this thread. Oh, Justin, that is genius. So Justin said, I marked a dot of disappearing int on each lazy daisy to help guide me to the ones to work in the color. That's some thinking. Um, so basically what Justin is saying is that they, before stitching it, <laughs> marked like all the purple ones, all, all of the, the light purple ones. So they, they don't have to keep going back and checking like how I'm having to do that is some good thinking. I'm going to do that next time. Actually, maybe we, we do that with the blues. Because we have, um, we still do have two colors. So I can just mark, I can mark all the blue ones. All right. Purple. I think I have another piece. Yeah, there we are. Okay, let's finish up these light purples. I think I'll get there with this strand. Our little pinch method of threading the needle there again. Zoop. Oh, where to buy? <laughs> where to buy? Uh, needles with humongous eyes. Yeah, you probably could use these ones. These are like embroidery chenille type needles. Um, but yeah, if you're using, man, I'm gonna have to do a whole thing on needles sometime again. Because I, I have to use some, like, super-duper hefty needles when I use the yarn. I don't even know what it's supposed to be used for some of the, sometimes these needles. All right. Oh, Lynn! Uh, I need to get a P.O. box. I should do that. Um, I'll have to see how much that, those are a month, because that would be handy. But that's awfully sweet of you. <laughs> All righty. Um... I gotta finish this guy, then these two. Oop, ba -doop. I think 
just this guy yet. Dun dun dun. Yeah, gosh, only three left. I think I'm getting that right. Dun dun dun. dun. Yep. Ooh, I lost it. Okay, right there. Oh, right in the middle here. Alright, we'll go towards it. One. Yeah, I've been doing my nails like every two and a half to three weeks now, and holy cow, is that a change from doing it every two to three days, tops. Um, so that's been been nice, but I still, it's still taking me forever to take them off. I think it went a little bit faster um, last time, but not that fast. Uh, it did help sanding off like the top layer as much as I could, filing off. But I need to do it a lot more than what I did. That's for sure. All right, these two guys up here, and then one more. Oh, before I forget, we're we're, we're gonna do our mystery gift, uh, little gift um, deal again today so twenty dollars or more spent in the penguin and fish shop uh, during our live or you know about 20 minutes or so after the live so you have time to look look around if you're if you're in the live now um, but twenty dollars or more in the shop and I will throw in a mystery gift for free you don't have to put it in your cart or anything or you don't need a code I will just see you know what time it was purchased and I'll, I'll just add it in there for you Oh dang, Caitlin, that is that is the question of <laughs> the year for me. Uh, Caitlin's asking, how far ahead do you have to design to get the kits out? I mean, ideally, so here's the ideal. The ideal is that I'd be like six months ahead. The reality is sometimes I am like two weeks ahead. <laughs> so... Uh, it's a problem. Um, I I am trying to get a little further ahead because otherwise I feel crazy. Um, I have the next two designed and they're stitched. I'm just working on um, getting the graphics for them together and then making the covers and stuff. Um, so the next two are figured out, but not after that i have some sketches started but yeah <laughs> the time keeps catching up on me so that's that's what i'm trying to figure out oh, i am making a mess back here i thought it felt funny oh well we have we have a goofy one back there yeah this one Oh, do I have a preference between ballpoint and non-ballpoint needles? Oh, is there a big difference? So, um, in my head, I call them sharp and blunt needles, um, and there is a difference, and there's a reason for the difference. So, a like for example, an embroidery needle might look just about exactly the same as a cross stitch needle, but a true like embroidery needle will be sharp whereas a true cross stitch needle will be blunt. And the reason for that is with a blunt needle, you don't want it to be able to pierce your fabric. So typically when you're doing cross stitch, you're using like that Ada cloth, which is it's a different, like a generic name for that is an even weave cloth where it has like those like pre-made holes almost. So I want my needle in cross stitch to just glide past the fabric and right in those holes. I don't want to accidentally pierce like in the middle of there. Um, you know, I suppose you do in certain stitches, but you don't in your casual stitching, you don't want it to like accidentally grab any, any extra little piece of fabric. Uh, so because it, you would have a blunt needle, it would just kind of glide into that hole. Whereas with embroidery, you do actually want to pierce the fabric. Like, I want to pierce right through this fabric. So um, a sharp needle 
uh, with a sharp point would work better than a blunt needle. A blunt needle, you're re really going to have to like, kind of push. Um, with a sharp needle, it'll like cut right into it, basically. Not really cut, that's the wrong word. I don't want it to, I don't want it to actually, like, I don't want it actually to cut a piece of the, like, grain of the fabric away, but it'll just more easily kind of go, go um, pierce the fabric. So that's kind of um, the reasoning of why you'd want a sharp needle versus a, a blunt, blunt needle. Gosh, now that I think of it, is it a ballpoint needle? Have I just been calling it a blunt needle? I screw up words like that sometimes. I'm going to have to look it up again. Um, but anyway, so that's the thinking behind. So it's like, what kind of fabric am I using? Um, and what would work best on that fabric? Like if I was going to like, ugh, this sounds horrible, but if I was going to hand stitch through vinyl, <laughs> a sharp freaking needle is going to be the way to go versus a blunt needle. So, um, ugh, that sounds like a not a fun idea, but anyway, you, that's an exaggeration, but you kind of get the, get the idea. <laughs> Amy says I could design a pin cushion. I won't give up. Uh, maybe I'll design a pin cushion pattern, <laughs> like, uh, for one of the embroidery of the months, a drawing of a pin cushion. That'd be funny. But that, that actually would be kind of fun. And then we could do a real pin cushion that same month. So on. Uh, yes, Caitlin, that is feasible. Caitlin says, so pandas out in time for Christmas is feasible. It sure is. I have not drawn any of the holiday. I have a sketch for um, Halloween. I have a couple Halloween ideas, but I don't have anything drawn for uh, winter holidays yet. So a panda in a cute little sweater or something could quite be feasible yet. <laughs> Oh, does it matter if only two, uh, Granny's asking, oh wait, no, Jenny, sorry, sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to call you Granny, I'm just like, that, like, I'm like three inches too far away from, from my computer screen, so it's a little blurry, but, um, Jenny is asking, does it matter if, uh, only two strands are used? It's a habit I have. Nope, um, the only difference with two strands is, um, your stitches will just be a teeny bit thinner that's all oh gosh this one's looking crazy which is totally fine like almost imperceptibly uh thinner than than the um three strands and actually the two strands oh shoot i just pulled it the wrong way pulled it out i always I always end up doing that um two strands you actually have some other benefits and I've, I've been stitching with two strands a lot more lately because of it um but with two strands you can do the loop method of starting, meaning you don't have to weave in any ends whatsoever. And, uh, well, except for at the end of the floss, but at the beginning of the floss, you can just like catch your loop, like make, um, fold your, fold your thread in half, like a long, like a single long strand in half. Uh, so you have the, like the fold on one side. So you thread the opposite side, you thread the two ends. And then uh, you make like a stitch, but before you pull the thread all the way through, you catch that loop on the back. And that's, that's all you need to do to start. So you do get that benefit with stitching two strands. So I do like that. Uh, when I do more delicate pieces, um, I, I do use two strands uh, more often. But when I'm doing like these little character guys and just like outlining, then then sometimes I'll just do three strands and it has that little heftier feel to it. Um, oh, do I have tatting supplies in the shop? I do have tatting shuttles. I do have a few of those left. Um, I don't have any other supplies than that. Like I don't have um, uh, like tatting specific thread um, or like kits or anything like that, but I do have shuttles and really that's, pretty much all you need for, for tatting. Uh, that, from what I've heard, uh, um, I haven't used it yet, but my mom has, and she, she agrees with what I've heard. Uh, the Lisbeth thread, I actually have some. Let's see if it's within arm reach. Ugh, it's not. Um, but the Lisbeth thread, 
um, is great for tatting and, and more designed for tatting. I have tatted with just uh, embroidery floss before. We have tatted these into snowflakes before, but it is, you know, slightly more difficult than thread actually made for tatting. But I do have shuttles. Uh, all right. Um, hey, that's it. That is it, it, it for for the purple, the light purple. So I am going to do that little marking. I, I think that's a great idea. So this was Justin's idea. Uh, I'm going to just mark just quickly here. I'm going to look at this and I'm just going to mark all the blue ones. I'm just going to mark like right in the middle, just teeny tiny. All the blue ones. And then I don't have to look at my instructions after that. Genius. Then everything after these blues, it's all the dark purple. So I don't have to look after that anyway. This guy and this guy. That's it. Love it. Ugh, that's what's so awesome. <laughs> Hanging out with you guys here. Uh, you have all the good ideas. I just steal them all. Steal all your good ideas. Um, all right, uh, blue. We have a little time left tonight, so I think plenty of time to get started on the blue. This is the denim wash color. And all these ones that we just marked are gonna be that blue, and then again, the rest are the dark, the dark purple. So, oops, so here's our, our three colors for, for this. Um, okay. Oh, the two thread knot. Yes. Uh, hello, my name is L. It's so amazing that the, the loop method of starting. So that is like, sometimes I will, um, if it is a little bit more delicate of a design, I will automatically decide we're doing two strands because then I can do that loop method. It's so awesome. It really is a game changer for sure. I agree. All right, let's get our 24 inches or so. Hey, Nicole, how are you doing today? I am doing swell. It was a beautiful day out. Uh, we got past that, um, you know, 90 whatever, eight degree day we had yesterday. Oh, Amy says, I love that we all learn from each other. I know, it's the best. I love learning new stuff and feel like we're learning all the magic tricks <laughs> with all of these crafts. It's just fun. Trying out things. Okay, uh, needle right there. Oh, and uh, I just, the needle miner reminded me of it again, but we uh, are doing our, spent $20 in the shop uh, during this live and I'll let it go for like 20 minutes or so after um, so you can actually go go when we're done but um, spend $20 in the shop and penguinandfish.com and I will throw in a free mystery gift uh, with no code or anything um, I will just check the time you don't need to put it in your card I will just just check the time when the order was made and I'll throw one in for ya. And we have uh, a few new new products this week. It's kind of like a week of new products. Uh, so if you haven't grabbed any of those yet, those would be um, something you might want to do during a live so you get the, the free gift. So our new products this week are the three, oops, the three needle minders. So th this is the needle minder that we uh, had originally. Uh, they're all our like swag, our, our penguin and fish swag needle minders. We're gonna do some other ones though too, I'm excited. Uh, but we started with the, the tan one, the fawn colored one, and our two new ones are the red and the white. And I think they're both really, really sweet, uh, but they're fun. So that's uh, one of our new products. And the other one is our uh, farm animal uh, four inch embroidery kit. So we got the rooster. Uh, cow, pig, and uh, the little sheepy. Uh, here's, we got them all kind of finished here too, and I think they just turned out so cute. Jenna stitched all these. Look at the little sheepy. Ugh, little piggy. I love his little tulip. 
I was gonna do a little mushroom for him, but the tulip was just kind of fun. The the two pinks and then the, these two these two fellers. So those are uh, the new new this week stuff. All right, this is great. I I just have to do the ones that have this blue dot in them. Ugh, that was a great idea, Justin. Love it. <laughs> Lisa says, needle minders, you need one of each color. So actually, on that note, well, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do for this. But if I did do animals, like, or some other ones in the future, I have, I have more ideas than just, like, some of our ABC animals. I do want to do the koalas and, like, the hedgehog and stuff. But, like, let's say I did the koalas. Would you want just the one version of koalas or would you want like a couple different colorways of koalas right away? Like you have a little, you know, I don't know, little blue koalas and little brown koalas or something. Or, or just like the one, would you rather have um, like no choice in the colors? So there'd just be like one design, I mean, and then like, I don't know, other ones besides that. Like other other completely different designs. Maybe we can always um, do one design, and if we sell out, then maybe we can do do them in a few different color ways. Maybe that's the way we approach it. Ugh! Already, I really love this blue in here. Oh, I was just about to look at my design for the next one, but I forgot. We got all the blue dots already on here. Oh my gosh, that's going to really speed this up. I'm doing that from here on out. For sure. That was a great idea. And since I just did like that tiny dot in the middle, like what Justin said, um, said to do, all my stitches are, uh, stitches are gonna cover up that dot, so I don't even have to like take it out or anything. Dang, I might speed through these before our time's up here. Well, actually, it's nine. It's nine twenty-eight. <laughs> we'll see. I'll probably at least go till my thread's out. I forgot that I'd probably need a whole other piece of thread to finish these these um, lazy daisies. Lazy daisies, they just suck up the the thread. Oh, dang. <laughs> Hello, my name is Elle says, fun fact, koalas are heavier than you think, like 20 pounds. Oh, wow. And have huge blunt claws. Ooh, blunt claws. I would never have guessed that. That would make an interesting piece of work, honestly. <laughs> oh, you held one once and was quite surprised. Oh, my gosh. I guess I never thought about how much they would weigh. But, yeah, I suppose that makes sense. <laughs> oh, funny. Koalas. They're so fun. We did that whole koala quilt. Was that two years ago now already? Oh my god. Or was it last year? That had to be last year. That wasn't two years, was it? Oh my god. That was turned out so cute. But yeah, so I think doing some koala needle minders. That would be really fun. Yeah, yeah, Lisa, I'm talking about um, for the needle minders. Like, would should I do like... If I do a design, should I do it with a couple different colorways right away, or just do the one design and then like later, later if we like it or want to try another colorway, do it. I know I'm stitching up upside down today, um, <laughs> for a lot of the part, but I'm just, I'm just moving my um, design so it's easiest for basically my left hand to hold that loop in place just because I don't know that's my favorite way of doing lazy daisy stitches speeding through these blue ones that really was a time saver to mark them all first oh I think I just pulled my thread super weird yeah we're gonna have to fix that let's pull this through I like pulled one strand at the needle so I pulled like one strand really goofy. Let's see if I can fix that. So there we go. Just get that all straight again. Oh, right there. Okay. 
Oh, I think we're good to go again. Put a little anchor stitch yet. Alright, Thursday tomorrow, so let's think about that. So Thursday, I should be able to, you know, if I continue on these lilacs, these little flowers, I should be able to, I would think, get all of the dark purple plus all those French knots that go with it done. Because I don't have to look at my design anymore, I can just kind of speed through them all. Theoretically. So, that just leaves Friday though, if that's all I got done. So dang, we'd have to do all the leaves and the text, oh, and his little face yet. Eh, that might be pushing it for Friday, but maybe we just stay late and get it done. Or maybe we get further, further than, um, than we think tomorrow. Oh, interesting, Noeline says koalas can be quite aggressive. In the wild, um, they make deep roar sound when threatened. Huh, 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 huh. I wonder, geez, how deep, I wonder how deep, deep um, their little bodies can get. <laughs> oh, Lisa says I, that she'd order uh, one of each color. Um, <laughs> if I did, did it in multiple colorways. Fun. Sometimes you just can't decide on a color, and they're like, ah, both of these would be kind of cute. Hard to choose sometimes. Uh, before, I mean, on my end, um, before, like, producing them. Oh, Caitlin says, koala quilt was three months ago in, in my view history. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like the entire past five years, or at least three years, I just don't know what happened when. It's all just a blurry puddle. Oh, Justin says, thanks for the kind words for the marking idea. Without your lead, I wouldn't even own a disappearing pen, let alone have a purpose for using it. Yeah, I, I love just having those pens, the, the, um, that, those um, water-soluble pens just kind of around. Um, they're fun, like just if you need to draw something out quick. and Yeah, I, this was a great idea to, to use them for, though, these, these little marks. I hadn't thought of ever using it just to like delineate something like this like to do something other than just um actually mark my embroidery line so this is that was cool i'm gonna it expanded my idea or, or my um current thoughts i guess of um how to use them so that's that's awesome i'm excited about this Ugh. got this guy all bunchy again i kind of pulled one strand a little bit more than the others and now it's getting so short that i'm it's hard to work with there we go <laughs> let's kind of balance that out of here oh yeah this guy looks shorter than he should look it always gets a little fumbly when i get it get short at the end here I'm trying to force out a few more petals than i than i normally could yeah, I think the goal tomorrow is let's try and finish up all of these, the, the entire, like, did we ever decide what this is called? Like a bunch, like a bunch of flowers? Like are each of these individual flowers? Like I think they are, right? But it, they, they come in a whole kind of like grouping, right? Is that, a, I'm sure that has its own special term. I don't know. But the whole grouping of tiny flowers and the little, little uh, French knots in there. Um, I'm hoping to finish that tomorrow. Oh, this is a bad idea. We're going to give it a go anyway. Do I have enough thread? Get around there. Oh, God, just barely. Yep, 
so we'll start up with the blue right away tomorrow. Finish up this blue. That should be pretty quick. I think we got, what, like four or five more. Then the then we don't have to think about the, the color anymore. It'll all just all be purple. Everything left in this area will be the dark purple, I mean. All right, needle miner, boop, uh, skizzers. Okay, I still like the little garbage. So we only have one more of our strawberries left. I did order a pile more, but they probably won't be here for like a month or so. But I still just freaking love those little strawberries. Okay, boop. Um, all right, oh gosh, see, that just adds so much to it right away, I think. Um, Oh, a cornucopia of lavender. Is that, <laughs> I, I'm going to call it that from now on. Oh, a bunch of flowers. Oh, cool. Looks like Amy's got, oh, a cluster. Oh, that's a good word. Amy says a cluster, but Amy <laughs> over on Facebook says the bunch of flowers is a Caledonia a tersis, a terse, thir, thris, Caledonia, Caledonia, a thris. I'm gonna have to look up how to pronounce that, but that's what that's what this like grouping of flowers is called. That's interesting. Cool. All right. Um, let me see. Oh, a cornucopia. <laughs> Hello, my name is Elsa. It's a cornucopia of lavender. That sounds really pretty too. All right. Uh, let's see. But this is looking really pretty with the blue, I think. And so we got a few more marked. How many more? One, two, three, four, five. Five more marked. And, and a petal. <laughs> so five more of that. And then the rest is this dark purple and every single one of these French knots. I mean, there's little dots hidden in here yet. Um, every single one of those, like they're boop, 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 scattered all around. Those are all um, French knots. They're all with the purple. So when we do the purple, I'll probably just like go like top to bottom again. I'll just kind of like work my way down and I'll do the French knots and the lazy daisies as I go down. Like I won't do all the lazy daisies first and then the French knots. I'll just do all of it um, as I like, I just cover a span basically. Kind of what we've been doing tonight, but uh, it'll be filling in all the gaps. So uh, that'll be fun. So I'm excited to get all that done. We'll do that first. I'm hoping we can get through that plus at least his face. Let's, let's at least try and finish the entire flower um, and the, the um, uh, face. It'd be great if we could start on some of the greenery as well, um, but we'll see. All right, you guys. So that is it for tonight. Uh, thank you again for joining me. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling better now. I'm feeling confident that we can get this done uh, by Friday. I think that'll be good. <laughs> if not, uh, it'll just be like a longish Friday. At, at, at worst, we'll just stay another 20 minutes or so on Friday to, to get it done. Um, but yeah, I'm stoked for it. Uh, so, all right, I will uh, let, uh, you know, I'll let the time start now for another 20 minutes or so for uh, that uh, order $20 or more in the shop. And I'll throw in that free mystery gift without a code and without um, you having to put it in your cart. I'll just toss it in. I'll let that go for, you know, till it's like 940 or so right now. I'll let that go till till 10-ish tonight. Um, so, cool. Awesome. Have a lovely rest of your evening. It was great chatting today, you guys. And uh, I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central. Good night.